Hello, we're here with Nicole Thomas Kennedy, who is running for Seattle City Attorney. Would you like to go ahead with your one minute introduction? Sure. So my name is Nicole Thomas Kennedy. I am running for Seattle City Attorney. I'm a former public defender who used to work in Seattle Municipal Court. And what I saw there was the prosecution uh, mostly of poverty and disability. And when I saw that Pete Holmes was running unopposed, I decided someone should be talking about that. So I threw my hat in the ring at the very last minute and got through the primary. And um, at this point, I'm really focusing on the solutions to the problems that I have been pointing out. So if we're not going to prosecute people, what are we going to do with them when they um, find themselves in these situations? How can we best meet the needs of survivors? How can we make sure that everyone's safe? And how can we uh, work within the community in a way that's going to prevent and reduce harm? Uh, I'm also involved in the civil side of things and in finding out new litigation strategies on the civil side. The civil side has done a fantastic job in the past of defending the city I'm and we'd like to continue. Great, Sorry. thank you so much. That's quite all right. Now we're gonna go ahead and go into the pre prepared questions. And again, the, the responses to these are two minutes in length. Um, I have put in here uh, Alice, Barbara, Andy, and then Sherry. Alice, would you like to go ahead with the first question while I drop it into the chat? Um, okay, I'll just read it. In civil matters, how will you balance protecting the city's legal position with the beliefs and priorities of Seattle voters in cases where there may be tension between them? Um, this is something that I've actually given quite a bit of thought to. Um, I think that one, there's, there's, first of all, there's a lot of things that are out there like that, especially um, in the wake of Jenny Durkin's mayorship, there is kind of a lot of things going on that people would like accountability for, would like those things to be addressed. Um, and that's certainly understandable. I think that there's a way to go about civil litigation that both protects the city's interests, but also understanding that, um, it's okay, I, I get it. Um, also understanding that um, the city, the people of Seattle, their, their interests are, are more than simply the financial aspect of, of the city. So um, I think that my goal, I think, is to really try to find places to limit municipal li liability where it can be found. And if not, then to um, try to negotiate settlements with people so, um, so people can get some recourse and some redress for what they have suffered, um, but also, and so the city's not involved in protracted litigation. Great, thank you. Uh, now we'll go into question number two. Barbara, would you like to take that one? I very much. Please describe any structural changes you plan to make to both the civil and criminal divisions of the city attorney's office. Sure, so for the civil side, um, there's only a few things that I would change around at this point. Um, I would, I think there's an attorney that works on civil asset forfeiture right now. Um, I don't think the city, I don't think the city attorney's office should be involved in, um, in that. That's an SPD matter. If they want to pay for an attorney that they can out of their budget, I would like to see that attorney work on wage theft instead. And I think that there's some redirecting of, of things like that that can be done in the civil division, but largely the civil division is operating well. It's um, I don't see a huge need for restructuring the civil side. I see a need for expansion so more services can be brought to the residents of Seattle. Um, things like a wage theft clinic. Um, so people who are experiencing wage theft can get immediate access to legal counsel, I think would go a long way um, in addressing those issues. On the criminal side, I plan to ramp it down pretty um, a lot. Um, there's a lot of, I just, there's just a lot of things I don't think we should be prosecuting. I don't see the point in putting someone who stole a sandwich in jail or someone, or how it addresses someone's mental health to put someone in crisis in jail, um, awaiting an evaluation and they later get out um, after being deemed too 
disorganized or in crisis to continue with the proceedings. That doesn't serve anybody's interest and it's a huge waste of money. So there is some things on the criminal side that I think that need at this point in time, city or state intervention, things like domestic violence and repeat DUIs need to be addressed. Um, but I think crimes of poverty, we could better address them by making sure that victims of those crimes can be made whole with a victim compensation fund. And we can get um, services and things that people need, spend the millions of dollars that we spend prosecuting right now and actually um, meet people's basic needs. I'm gonna end there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now question number three, um, Andy. Um, what is your management style and how do you plan to work with city officials and precinct, precinct liaisons? My management style is very open door, um, willing to listen, um, but also making being the ultimate decider when it comes to things and making sure that that is known, um, but always giving reasons for why I'm deciding what I'm deciding. For the precinct liaisons, that's something that I'm considering not continuing. That was something that was instilled during Pete Holmes's, uh, Pete's um, tenure. I don't think that it is necessarily working um, or worth continuing at this time. Uh, I just, I don't think that the city attorney's office should be staffing those positions. If SBD feels like they need legal counsel, then they can obtain it for themselves. Um, there's still obviously things I'm not in the office right now, so I don't know. So I'm leaving it open to whether, um, I'm not gonna say for sure that those are positions that I would take away, but, um, but I don't think, to me, what I've seen is the city working hand in hand so closely with SBD has not worked out well for the residents of Seattle. So I would not, um, I'm hoping to ramp that down. But like I said, I don't pretend to know everything without being in the office, so. I'm leaving that open at this point. Great, thank you. And question number four, uh, Sherry. Hi, how responsive can you be to emergency situations given that emergencies regular, regularly arise for local governments? And how will you handle meeting tight deadlines with competing priorities? Um, I mean, I, I can be, really responsive to emergencies. I live pretty close to downtown. There's really nothing that would prevent me from being extremely responsive to emergencies. Um, competing priorities on tight deadlines. I mean, I was a public defender for four years and I don't know if everybody knows, but I had a 200 case caseload where there was often crisis after crisis after crisis demanding my attention. And I'm very good at juggling many of those things at the same time and understanding that everything does need attention when it needs attention. Um, so I really don't, I don't see that as being an issue. It's something that I'm very used to. Great, thank you. Uh, now we'll go into follow-up questions and the response time for these are one minute apiece. And Sarah, please go ahead. Um, so you talked about domestic violence, but as you probably know, gender-based violence has increased during the pandemic. Um, what specifically would you do um, to prosecute crimes uh, around gender-based violence, including sex, uh, for example, assault fours? Uh, what would you do in terms of prosecuting or not prosecuting a sex assault fours? And if not, then what other sorts of interventions um, do you believe in? I think there needs to be a lot of different options. At this point in time, we only have one option, which is prosecuting someone and putting them in jail um, or re requiring them to go through an additional treatment program. I think that there's there are some cases that would be where transformative or restorative justice practices would be more appropriate. Um, that's not every case. I mean, obviously there needs to be the consent of both parties and everybody needs to be in a safe place for that in order for that to happen. So that's not available to everyone. I think that the thing to remember about misdemeanor prosecutions is the maximum sentence is less than a year in jail. So every single person that gets in is going to get out. And the question is, how do we guarantee safety for survivors um, in those situations? And I think that the main answer is being survivor centered. Instead of focusing on punishing the aggressor, we really need to be focused on survivors and what they need to get themselves out of those situations. Great, thank you. Uh, Paula, go ahead. Thank you. Um, you mentioned that you might discontinue the precinct liaison uh, under that position. What would you propose instead to have an effective working relationship with SPD? 
I mean, I think that really remains to be seen. Right now, there's not that great of a relationship between the city attorney's office and SPD. There's many different aspects to SPD, not, um, not everyone is the same that works there. And so my goal would be to really explain that we're trying to take things off of their plate. I don't think that it's going to necessarily land the way I want it to land, but that doesn't change the fact that that in reality, that that is what needs to happen. Um, there is, I think there's a sense that, I mean, there's a sense right now, um, and I hear it and I've seen videos of it where SPD will constantly tell people, oh, we can't do this because the city attorney won't prosecute or because the council person won't prosecute or things like that. And I really don't, um, I really would like to know when that is happening. And I don't think that by being nicer to SPD, that's going to create the environment that we want necessarily. Thank you, Time. Thank you. Um, let's see, any other questions? Sarah, go ahead. Um, so sorry to follow up on this, but I've heard that you wanted to abolish the entire criminal division. And then you say, well, in, in situations where we're addressing domestic violence, maybe not. So could you just kind of break down, I'm an attorney, my husband works for the King County Prosecuting Attorney's Office, actually in sexual assault, break down exactly which, um, which crimes you would actually prosecute and in, in the criminal division and where you wouldn't. Sure. So right now, most of the theft cases are unsheltered people. A lot of them are from Goodwill. I would not prosecute any of those. I think that's a waste of taxpayer money. Um, the things I have said that I do want to abolish the system, but abolishing the system doesn't mean overnight we just stop prosecuting everything and everybody gets out of jail and murder is legal and it's an escape from New York type situation. Abolition means we're building up community-based resources that decrease the need for police and jails. So there are some things that I simply don't think that should be in that court at all, that tax dollars should not be spent on people sleeping under an awning or someone stealing a coat from Goodwill. I think that's an utter waste of money and I would stop doing that immediately. But things where there is interpersonal violence or repeat DUIs, I do think that we need some city intervention at this point. We don't currently have the structures to deal with all of those situations um, without prosecution at this point. So those are the things that I have pinpointed that I do think that we will uh, need to continue with. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Paula, then Mackenzie. Thanks, Nicole. I'm just following up on what you've just stated there. The uh, um, the authority of the city attorney's office to build up other resources is, is limited. What would you do in the interim to to manage public safety before those resources are in place? Well, when it comes to issues of public safety, I think that we're talking about interpersonal violence and DUI. I really don't think that um, the thefts from Target and the thefts from Goodwill are really that much of an issue to public safety overall. There is in the works a victim's compensation fund that I believe is going to be funded through HSD. It's going, um, that's our, like, that's something that's being worked on right now. Um, there is, there are diversionary programs that be, are being built up and expanded right now. Choose 180, Gay City, Community Passageways are all places that are working on building up those resources. Um, those are things that can be funded through the city attorney's department, expanded mental health services, victims advocacy services, those can be funded through the city attorney's office. A lot of it though is going to require communication and collaboration with community, with the city council and with the mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mackenzie, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to uh, ask, would you like to take a moment to maybe differentiate, your, differentiate yourself from your opponent? Um, are there any, maybe one certain policy or an agenda that she has said that's something she would like to do if she gets elected? And if, uh, if that's something that you disagree with, like how would you do that different? Sure. I mean, so Ann Davison really only talks about the criminal side of things. Um, she hasn't really made any statements about the civil side of the office at all. And on the criminal side, what she says is the um, rampant homelessness that we see in the street is the result of under prosecution. Um, I think we all know that that is not true. Um, there's a like a, a crisis, a community crisis of people not having shelter all over this country. It's not related to a permissive culture. Um, what Ms. Davison is advocating for is for, um, first of all, she doesn't differentiate a lot of times between homeless people and people she considers to be criminals. 
Um, and so, and I, I absolutely do. Um, and I think that we cannot house every homeless person in the, in the King County Jail. Um, that's the bottom line. We really need to find community resources and come together around this problem and stop pretending we can punish our way out of it. Great, thank you. Um, I have a question. Uh, what do you perceive to be the city attorney's role in dealing with the council? I mean, it's ultimately very collaborative. I mean, first, the city attorney needs to advise the council on their any proposed legislation or actions they take. That's that's one of the jobs of the city attorney is advising the council about the legality and what potential pitfalls and potential lawsuits that might be coming out of anything that the council does. Um, and I think the other part is, you know, being an advocate for the things that I know to be true, which are that prisons and policing don't actually create public safety and working with the council on finding other ways of meeting people's needs and of preventing harm. Um, and then it's, uh, it's, it's really like collaborating with them because some of the resources needed for public safety are, shouldn't be funded by the city attorney's office. Um, and so working with the council to get restorative justice, violence interruption and things like that funded um, is, is something that would need to be collaborated with the council for. Great. Thank you, uh, Paula and then Sarah. Thank you very much. I'm just curious, could you just talk us through how you uh, your thought process on managing risk. When risk comes to your office, how do you think about managing that? I mean, that's it's hard to say how to manage an amorphous risk. Are you talking you decision say, making? Just decision making, right? Processes. How to make decisions? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think for me, it's like you have to imagine every possible outcome and what the reaction would be to that outcome and figure out what things that are, we could deal with and what things we can't deal with. And so if there's a risk that something is going to say, create bad law or something is going to really uh, result in something potentially catastrophic, um, th those would things would be things that we shouldn't pursue. Um, but everything needs to be balanced against I mean, all litigation needs to be balanced against like, what, what do we think we can, what kind of change can we actually achieve? What can we actually get um, for victims versus what are we risking at the same time? I mean, that's like a very, it's sort of a lengthy analysis and it really requires thinking through the entire problem and any potential outcomes. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Sarah, go ahead. Uh, Nicole, you've spoken to how you'd like to expand the civil division. Can you speak more specifically to how you would like to do so other than wage theft and then how you would bring affirmative litigation and what sort of experience you have doing so? Sure. So the areas that I would like to expand the city attorney's office on would be um, wage theft, tenants' rights, land use policy, and, and with that, some environmental litigation. And so the affirmative litigation that I would like to engage in um, would be things that result in climate and racial equity, um, things like the repeal of I-200, but it would, doing so would require collaboration and um, hearing from different community members, hearing from labor, making sure that this is the right thing to do at this time. Um, uh, the same with climate justice. There has been a lawsuit that um, Pete Holmes said he was going to file about three years ago, and he has not. Um, and there's been some success with similar lawsuits in other jurisdictions. And I think that we really need to be spending time um, finding those things that can result in the biggest return for Seattle with a minimum amount of risk. And since people, uh, since jurisdictions have been so far, thanks. Great. Thank you so much. And now I'm going to ask for a one minute wrap up. Okay, uh, one minute wrap up. Um, so thank you for having me here. And thank you for considering um, my candidacy for your endorsement. Um, I don't want to be that much of a disruptor, I think, as people think I want to. Um, I really want to make sure that we are meeting our problems, fully facing what they are and what they will take to overcome. I think for a long time, we have relied on prosecution and police 
to um, solve our problems for us. And we are now beginning to realize that it actually doesn't solve our problems. And so we need to be turning away from this approach. We really need to be focusing on the most vulnerable, what is going to lift the most vulnerable out of poverty, what is going to result in housing for the most vulnerable, because that seems to be whether someone is housed or unhoused seems to be the, the real focus of a lot of people in Seattle right now, which is understandable. I mean, um, we are having a community crisis, and I think that we really need to strategize around what is going to actually um, help that situation. Great. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop the video now. Okay. I'm going to go in a different room because my computer's about to die on top of everything else. Oh, wait. Never mind. I can plug it in. No, I can't.